the fifth circuit, Leary calls the neurosomatic circuit, and I've never found a better label for it. The neurosomatic circuit is turned on by reaching out the first four circuits in the traditional yogic way, just ordinary meditation. Spend 45 minutes a day trying to clear your head of all thoughts. By repeating the mantra, by concentrating on some object in your field of vision and blocking everything else out of it. So I get the usual way of turning it on, which I almost forgot to mention throughout most of history, has been cannabis. Cannabis is a specific chemical for the receptor sites in the brain where the neurosomatic circuit is activated. Whether you smoke it or eat it in muffins or brownies, it tends to create an explosive enrichment of the sensory sensual manifold. And immediately you'll find the hell of a lot is going on in your body and in your perceptual field that you haven't known before. A lot of it is hilarious and a lot of it is sexy and a lot of it is thrilling and a lot of it just bowls you over with mystical horror. First circuit anxiety begin to look silly and paranoid. Second circuit emotional compulsions begin to look a bit robotic and you're embarrassed by them and you want to get rid of them. And third circuit reality tunnels begin to seem very subjective and relative. And your fourth circuit sexual pattern begins to seem a bit robotic and silly too. This is the access to very advanced yoga the years of practice of yoga. Or through peyote or psilocybin. Or light doses of LSD. I went through Kabbalistic magic. You can begin to encounter what seem to be separate intelligences. They may be aspects of your own brain. I thought, gee, I'd like to try one of them because I've never had a mystical or religious experience. So eventually I got a hold of some peyote. And I had a mystical experience. I had a lot of experiences which had changed my idea of reality profoundly. <laughs> The idea of reality is a singular now. Doesn't make any sense to me at all anymore. The experience of transcending time. The experience of feeling that this body right here and now is only a cross section of a process that has been going on for four billion years. It's a sense of immortality, a sense that when this body dies, the genetic vector of which this body is an expression will just continue through time. The seventh circuit. Thank you.
and our cold tradition in the eye of the top. And it's you and yet it's much more than you. And that's why so many people call it the direct communication with God and becoming one with God. but you can become one with an ant. In my books, I call it the meta-programming circuit. You become sort of like a computer that can program itself. Every type of gene just, I think, results from meta-programming. So who is the meta-programmer? That is the question. The uh, eighth chakra is not in the body, but above the body. I call that the non-local quantum circuit. And the non-local circuit is preparing us maybe for fusion with other intelligences throughout space-time. The higher you get in the circuits, the harder it is to talk about them in so many predicate sentences with the years of identity in the middle of them. And they can be better described in art and music, but I do the best I can. <laughs> 